In late 2019, a team of researchers with the Arizona Game and Fish Department placed 124 trail cameras in the Apache Sitgreaves National Forest. They were spaced about three and a half miles apart, and what they captured is really cool. Bears with cubs. Elk and deer. And fawns nursing. Mountain lion with a mule deer kill. A solid white turkey hen. A lot of cool photos. They captured so much wildlife, even though they were targeting one specific species. More on that in a moment. The cameras worked day and night in the sun and the snow. One camera fell victim to wildfire and another photographed the flames. They checked the cameras and retrieved the images about every two weeks, every month for those in extremely remote locations. Now's the fun part. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to go ahead and go through them all and ID the photos and say whether or not there's a, a critter or if there's nothing in there. The cameras were set to record a burst of 30 frames every time they were motion activated. So by the time the eight month study period had ended, they had produced a mind blowing number of images. Seven and a half million photos. <laughs> you heard her right, seven and a half million. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, um, as we were getting them in, we were IDing them and stuff. So once the grand total came in, it's like, takes you back a little bit as far as how much you've done and how much you had to go at that point. Yeah, we'll just keep scrolling through them. Nathan's logging images from one of the cameras. Picture 61 through 245. We'll go ahead and tell it that it was a gray fox. And then we'll tell it to apply that ID to all those photos. It's a long, tedious process. Those days when you have those thousands of photos of nothing but you know grass blowing in the wind and you, you finally, it was like, well, I, well, hey, there's a wolf, <laughs> you know? We couldn't have done it without all of our volunteers and um, technicians and interns and biologists. It was, it was a big effort, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty thankful to everyone that helped out. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. So, January 4th. Camera 101. After importing every photograph into their database, they focus only on those images of endangered Mexican wolves. And of those wolf photos, we have about 20,000 photos and about 310 events, um, which an event, we're calling it independent if an hour has elapsed between one photo to the next. So the purpose of the study is to generate an abundance estimation for Mexican wolves. We want to know how their population is doing so that um, we can apply this information to determine whether or not we can delist them at some point in the future. The goal is to find out if camera traps are a viable alternative to the existing method of estimating wolf population, which requires expensive airplanes and helicopters. Currently, wolf counts are conducted each year by the Mexican Wolf Interagency Field Team. It's a big job that requires months of work by land and by air. Locating wolf packs consistently is possible because some of the animals are wearing GPS radio collars. When the IFT captures and collars a wolf, it marks each collar with a unique pattern of colored tape. It's a way to visually identify individual wolves. Those collars are critical to managing the Mexican wolf population, and they are key to this research project. Oh yeah, that's a good shot. Without them, it's nearly impossible to tell one wolf from another. And so then I just go through the photos here and taking note of the collar tape pattern, so we have orange on the box and orange on the right side and blue on the top. So Brianna and Nathan examine every single wolf photo looking for clear shots of collars. That one's kind of nice. It's a little bit more in the light. So looking at the information from IFT, this, this individual here um, has blue on top with orange on the sides and we can confirm that with some of this other information that they gave us. And looking at the other photos 
from these other individuals, none of these other ones have that similar kind of tape pattern. So we feel pretty good with calling this particular wolf 1704. And then we'll go on to our next wolf. It didn't take long to learn that this method of counting wolves comes with its own set of challenges. It's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> Some of them, uh, they either don't have collars or maybe the wolf runs by too quickly and we don't get a great shot of its neck um, or it's too blurry. Um, so sometimes we have to label them as uncertain. Some of them, the tape is either rubbed off too much or the photo was taken in the infrared and we can't get a good idea of the collar tape pattern or color. So in those cases, um, we have to assign usually just collared unknown because we still know they're collared but we just can't identify them to individuals so. When the research team publishes the results of this study it plans to include recommendations for best practices. They might suggest better ways to mark wolves and the best time of year for using camera traps. In the winter they have fluffy winter coats so it makes it a little bit more difficult to see their collars and ID them so in the summer when they shed it's it's definitely a lot easier to, to see those collars. They're also evaluating how to get the job done with far fewer photos. Because right now we do have our cameras taking 30 photos per burst for per activation and maybe we can still identify that wolf in three photos instead of 30. They did discover one thing that could have an immediate impact on wolf management. A concentration of uncollared wolves was photographed in an area close to the White Mountain Apache Reservation. So if anything out of this project, we're going to be able to at least tell IFT that, hey, you have this kind of section that has quite a few uncollared individuals, maybe like tailor your next survey efforts in this area. They say knowledge is power, and that's what this research project is really all about giving biologists more information and options for managing endangered Mexican wolves.